Um, so, hi Annette. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining me this afternoon. So, we're here to talk about some of your experiences in accessing the NHS and social care. Um, maybe could we start by you telling me about some of the health challenges that you've experienced? Well, like I said before, I've got lots. But the main ones are that I had polio as a child, which is now affecting me in what's locally known as post-polio syndrome. And this means that some of the problems of mobility and breathing are really, really difficult at the moment. And that obviously has a big impact on everything. Um, I, I, I struggle to walk far. I struggle to remember things. Um, just, just generally lots of little things that kind of mount up. I have had other health issues in the past. I had, unfortunately, a, a ruptured appendix, which led to a serious bowel surgery. That has got obvious implications, which I'd rather not talk about, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, and um, I had uh, a pituitary trouble as a child, hormone trouble. But later, I had the loss of my husband, who had a brain tumour. And then my parents, who were very elderly, who did very well, but had issues that I helped look after. They have now gone. So yeah, I've not had it easy, <laughs> but I'm still here and that's the main. So it sounds like you've um, experienced health problems from quite early on. Yes, from a very young age, yeah. But they're affecting you more now than they did when you were younger. The, the, the polio problem certainly did. It was bad at the time, but unfortunately, I thought it was better. <laughs> uh, I had problems throughout my childhood, my teens, where I couldn't run very far and I, you know, I couldn't understand why everybody else could swim up and down the swimming baths and I was panting and panting, but I didn't associate it. Nobody told me it was the result of the polio until as I got into my 40s, 50s, when this syndrome, as they call it, post-polio syndrome, became identified. I wasn't alone. Other people, although a few of them, were suffering the same way. And what health care have you needed to access to, to support you with those health issues? Well, I'm not, unfortunately, entitled to very much. This is the other issue. I think sometimes some, of, some established health issues are better treated than others. Um, so as far as the post-polio is, I eventually was able to uh, ascertain a blue badge for parking because it's difficult to walk far from wherever I've left my car. But every three years I needed that reassessing as if it was going to get better. I do appreciate that a lot of people take advantage of these things, but there are an awful lot of people similar to me whose health issues are not ever going to get better. And kind of feel a bit treat, bal mal maltreated, badly treated, in having to go through all these procedures again. Um, I have bought myself a mobility scooter, I have bought myself a little pusher thing, but I've had to provide all these things out of my pocket. I know I'm lucky enough to be able to afford it, but, you know, it's a bit of a two-tiered system sometimes. So what processes are involved in reapplying for your blue badge? Well, you get a form to fill in. You have to go to get photographs again. You have to get a letter or a, a something or other from your GP to say that you are entitled to this. Then you have to go to a, a board and be assessed with people asking you all these sort of questions again, watching you walk up and down, watching whatever it is you or problems you have and then them deciding that, yes, you're okay. And unfortunately, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, I guess, not always the person who's doing this is the right person to be doing it. So, you know, I, I appreciate that you can't always have a, a fully trained doctor to, uh, to do this, but some of the 
most of the, these people are just administrators and don't really know. So how have you found using the NHS over the years? Well, one of the things that I think has got more difficult over the years, in fact, it's almost stupid, is the fact that you have now. If you see more than one doctor and you need to tell them you've moved your address or this, that and the other, you've got to tell each individual department separately. When I first went there, you, there was a, you rang up and you said, I'm moving house and somebody took all the details and that was the end of it. These days, when I rang to tell the government at James's that I was moving, they say, ask me which consultant that's are. I said, well, which one do you want to know? They said, well, you have to tell them all. I said, what, individually? This is, a, this is a, an electronic age and I have got to inform each department. Yes. I thought that was crazy. I thought that was absolutely crazy. And, and how was that like a phone call you had to make? Yeah, I had to ring each one. And of course, you, you know you know what it's like. You're hanging out. You are in the third in the queue. You will be answered as soon as possible. We apologise and you listen to all this music. And eventually somebody answers and then you tell them that. And then they say, can you put me through to the other department? Oh, no, you'll have to ring again. Now, that's just nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Um. And you mentioned before when we were talking about a knee replacement that you had. <laughs> oh, yes. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Um, I, uh, partly as a result of the polio, um, my right knee was okay, but the left side was affected. And I spent a lot of, had a lot of treatment on the left knee. And the consultant said to me, by the time you're 60, your other knee will be an absolute mess and you'll need a new replacement. And I went away and thought, well, that's a years ago, you know, I won't bother me. But then, of course, these things catch up with you. And somebody at work said to me, you do realize you're actually waddling and your right leg is beginning to bend. So I said, uh, well, yes, it does hurt a bit, to be honest. So I went to the GPs who said, well, we'll send you for an X-ray. And I went to, to Chapel Allerton to the, have this x-ray. And these days you're very good, this is a plus of the NHS, is that you actually get a copy of the report sent to the patient, which said, this knee needs replacing more or less ASAP. And so I went to the GP and said, well, I've had a copy, you must have had one. So he brought it up on the screen and he said, oh yes, we'll send you for some physio. To which I said, well, it says I need a new knee. And he said, oh, no, we don't do that. We have to have your physio first. You, 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 you might get better. And I said, well, it's a... I said, well, anyway, I've got private health, private health insurance. Oh, well, you can go along and have it done straight away. And referred me, and I could have had it done the next week. But the NHS procedure is you go for physio. And you'd prob I'd have probably had to wait for weeks before I could have even had that. And they, when I did actually have the knee replaced, which I didn't have straight away because of having to sort out care for my parents, the consultant who did it said it should have been done so far sooner. It was a complete mess. So God knows what it would have been like if I'd have waited them even longer. I mean, that sounds like a really challenging experience and, and like you weren't really listened to when you were kind of just describing the problem that you had. Yeah. Have you ever complained about any of the care that you've received from the NHS? Oh, no, probably not. <laughs> because I know that it's... I know that the... I know you won't want to hear this, but I know as an employee that they, in general, do their best. Okay, and just uh, on to my last question then. Um, is there any advice that you would offer to your 20-year-old self, knowing what you know now? Um, what's that? I think the one thing I would advise is that you really try and prevent rather than wait <laughs> until something happens. We should um, try and support the health service that we have better 